Hi everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be learning about Git and POST requests. Now we're going to be learning about what a Git and a POST request is, as well as how to use them in PHP. So the first part is going to be learning what they are. If you already know a little bit about HTTP requests and you want to skip ahead, check the video. I'll have chapters set up so you don't have to see these boring slides if you already know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, I highly recommend checking out this first part. We're going to go through the slides. I'm just going to give you some basic background of what a GET and a POST request is. All right, hopping right into things, we're going to be talking about HTTP requests in this video, specifically GET and POST. There's a plethora of other kinds of requests, right? There's delete, there's patch, there's put, connect, trace, all kinds of stuff. But 90% of the time, you're only going to be working with GET and POST. Sometimes you'll work with put and delete, but mostly GET and POST. And the other ones you'll really almost never work with unless that's a specific part of your job or something. As a software developer, I barely work with anything besides those four. So what are HTTP requests? An HTTP request or hypertext transfer protocol request is what the client sends to the server. So think about it like this. You want to get information or send information. You're going to send something to the server. In order to send that to the server, you're going to be using an HTTP request. And then the server is going to return something. So the most common ones are GET and POST. So the most common by far is a GET request. That is the most common because a GET request is a way for the user to get data from any source of the internet. Every single time that you go into a browser and I type in youtube.com and I hit enter, that's a GET request. And the server is deciding it wants to send all this stuff. As you can see, I've been playing some Elden Ring, but it wants to send all this stuff right back to me. We're going to be going through it in the code and getting more in-depth knowledge of what a GET request is. But this is the raw basics right here. So you can just think of a GET request as a way to get data from a server. And the more complicated one here is the POST request. A POST request is used to send data to a server. Now, in most cases, you're going to be sending some data, and then the server is going to receive the data. And based on the data you send, it's going to be looking at its database, and it's going to be either updating or creating new entries in the database. A common example of a POST request is a create a user form, right? We've all created accounts on various forms of social media and other websites. When you hit that submit button on that form, what it's doing is it's taking all the data you wrote and it's sending a POST request to the server and it's telling the server, hey, we need to create a new user here. And that's how it stores all of your user information with a POST request. And then afterwards, it'll send back a status of, OK, we're good. The post request went through. It's a little different than a GET request, which might be giving you an entire page to browse. This one might just be sending you, all right, 200, you're good. You don't need to worry about anything else. OK, the last thing we're going to talk about here is query parameters. Now, this is a way to send additional information in an HTTP request. The way that this works is you have something like maybe, let's say, again, youtube.com now what we would do here is put a question mark put a query parameter maybe test equals some value let's say test equals test now we're not going to get anything here but you'll see here if i search hello look at this results question mark search underscore query equals hello that's how youtube is doing all of its searching with this little query parameter now, what if I wanted to add a filter? Let's say last hour. Look at that. We have an and sign, and now SP equals something weird, right? I'm not going to get into how YouTube's algorithm works because I have no idea. But the point is, this is the bread and butter of how HTTP requests, especially GET requests, are done. With that, that's going to be the end of these slides. We can hop right into the code now. All right, now to the fun part. Let's hop into some code, and let's work with this. So I'm going to make a new file here. I'm going to call this index.php. And then I'm going to use PHP, a PHP extension to serve my project with PHP. Inside of the index.php file, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to var underscore dump dollar sign underscore git. What does that do? Well, let's not worry about that for now. You'll see what it does in a little bit. At the moment, it's just going to say it's an empty array. But essentially what this is, is dollar sign underscore git is all of our git variables. What the hell is a git variable, right? So 
An important thing to note is something called query parameters. Well, what if we put question mark test equals test? Look at that. Now we have one thing. Let's put an ampersand test to equals hello. Look at that. Now we have two variables in here. And if we refresh the page, we'll still have the two. So how do we access an individual variable? Well, let's echo one out to show you. Let's say dollar sign underscore get. This is an array. We're going to want to get test. So we should see test echoed out below or right next to it. And there we have it, test. So where this really comes in handy is with a standard form. So let's make a form here. So let's make a form here. Now let's give it a method equal to get and an action equal to, well, we just want to have it get this page. So index.php. Let's make an input type equals text name. Now the name, this is where name is absolutely key. If you ever wonder what name in a form does, this is exactly what it does. So we're going to give it a name value equal to test. And then we're just going to need a input type equals submit. Just a little submit button. Okay, refresh this. Now let's make this hello, submit it. Look at that, we're echoing out hello, and now we have test hello. Let's say test two, now we have test two, right? So that's the whole point of this, is we have a simple form with a get request, and we're able to change a variable. So where would this be used? Well, commonly, people want to have a username at the top of the field, right? So maybe instead we do name. Let's change this to name. Label, enter your name. And instead of echoing out this, let's echo out hello blank. Now with nothing here, we're just going to get a warning and it's just going to say hello blank. But let's make it Mike, enter, and look, now we have hello Mike. If we get rid of the var dump too, it'll look really clean. Look at that, hello Mike. Perfect. So that's an example of what you might want to use a get request for. But what you really want to do is use post requests for sending form data. So I'm going to make a new file here, and I'm going to call this post.php. I'm going to var dump dollar sign underscore post. Let's put a br tag. And just to make this super clear, um, let's echo another BI tag here. And I'm going to var dump dollar sign underscore get just so that you can see that they're two totally different things. So what happens if I'm in index.php and I want to send data to post.php? I can't just do a get request. So sorry about that. I actually never put an equal sign here, but that'll kind of show my next point, which is that it doesn't really matter what's here. Um, so say Mike, you'll see we get hello Mike, perfect. Now let's change this to post. So now what we're trying to do is method get for post.php from index.php. Let's say test. What? Isn't that weird? We're still on index.php. Another test, maybe if I refresh the page, another test. There we go. So now we're on post.php and we did just do a get request. But we don't want to do a get request. We want to do what's known as a post request. But you'll see here, right, the first array shows another test. Now let's change this to post. Save, go back, refresh. 
type task, submit. Now we have our post data, right? Because if we look here, the post data is the second one that gets output. So now we have data being posted. Now this is the way that you traditionally want to do it because a lot of times you'll be using JavaScript to asynchronously post send data. So in one form submission, you might have, you know, I was just doing this at work earlier and one form submission had about, it wasn't even a form submission actually, it was a button click. It had about eight different post requests because we're monitoring all of the data on who's clicking it and all this other stuff and how many times they're clicking it and are they clicking another button after and all kinds of stuff. So it's an important thing to do. Now that's the key difference is that we're posting it. So we're just sending the data. We don't actually have to redirect the user to that page if we don't want to. In this case, since we're using a traditional form and not an Ajax post, we are in fact gonna be going there, which is totally fine. It might look the same, but believe me, it's by no means the same. So if we post that data to post.php, then what we can do here is, you know, we could say echo hello dollar sign underscore post grab the name let's get rid of some of this extra fluff and maybe here we could have something like create your account go back look at that create your account enter your name Mike and now we get posted to this new page which says hello Mike and there you go that is the basics of post and get requests in PHP